Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. Really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News. Of course, the daily series here on the channel where I reflect on what's being said in the world of Chelsea. Social media, general footballing media, and beyond. Give you my opinion on it. More importantly, as always, asking for yours. The window has gently closed, delicately... <laughs> Fell shut. It hasn't slammed shut. The transfer window is closed. Chelsea have signed nail players. We've got rid of a bunch, loaned a bunch, and recalled a couple. I mean, Malangs are still hanging around, so it's not been the greatest of uh, transfer windows in terms of desired effect. Has Chelsea let down Maurizio Pochettino, who for a while, I know he did contradict himself a little bit, for a while did call for new signings. And we sent away Armando Bria to Fulham. We're going to speak about that. We're going to speak about my boy, Big Wesley Fofana, giving it the big one on social media. Going to return to the side soon. You know I'm a Wesley Fofana super fan. We're going to talk about that a little bit, mate. And just generally talk Chelsea. So thank you for coming. Thank you for hanging out with me today here on Football Therapy. On the road to 180,000 subs. So thank you if you choose to subscribe. And if you make that choice, hit the bell notifications icon. Thanks for liking the video. Let's get into it. Starting off with Wesley Fofana. He responded to a Chelsea fan on social media who posted the Premier League table. He said this. I'll be there soon to sort all that out. Don't worry. Go on, Wesley. I give everything in the gym to come back stronger and better. It's a long process, but the best version of Wesley Fofana is coming. Yes, I love Wes Fofana. People forget. He is a very expensive young defender. Remember we bought him from Leicester City and they wanted £85 million. They wanted a world record fee for a centre-back. We got him for £69 million, which I think is actually very good value considering how good this kid is and how young he is. It's a nice story as well because he's a Chelsea fan. His picture on social media is him as a young boy wearing a Chelsea shirt. It's great. I love it. I do think the long-term centre-back partnership for Chelsea will be Big Wes and Levi, two young centre-backs, left-footer, right-footer, playing together. The age of Thiago Silva is over. It's, you know, it's got to be. He's going to be 40. And I, as much as some people have beliefs in the Monaco duo of Benoit Badia-Shiel and Axel de Sassi, not for me, personally. I think it should be Wes and Levi. That should be the long-term project to get those two into a budding partnership. You know, please, Pochettino. I know people are upset with you at the moment, but bring back the coaching where you made Vertonghen and Alderweireld like the best centre-back partnership in the league. Where's this Poch gone? He's got to be in there somewhere, I believe. Favala as a profile of centre-back is actually very exciting as well. Watch that guy as he goes forward with the ball and how he can break lines as a centre-back and then Levi can spray passes. It's there for us. It's there and I love the confidence. I love to hear it from him and I would just love to see him back. Mate, Think about our first choice lineup. Reese James next to his homeboy Wes, who's next to Levi, who's next to Chile, all in form. I know Chile had a bad game at Anfield, but he's a great player. That is a back four, ladies and gentlemen. We've got good midfielders, but they need to click again. And you know, Nkunku plus Palmer plus a new striker maybe in the summer. The future's bright. We have to believe. Anyway, I wanted to reference that story because I love those words from Big Wesley Fafana. Speaking with his chest. Now, we're going to talk about Bria next, of course, he went to Fulham, uh, and then we'll end the video talking about have the owners let Pochettino down a little bit with, you know, getting rid of players but not signing anyone. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Of course, it's been a unique transfer window in that sense, people not spending as much. Anyway, let's jump over to The Athletic now to cite an article finding out what's happened with Armando Bria. Bria has completed his loan moon from Chelsea to Fulham. As part of the deal, Fulham will pay Chelsea a loan fee up to... Four million pounds. However, that could potentially drop to zero after a certain number of appearances. Fulham just got the deal for Broya over the line, submitting a deal sheet 
their second in the consecutive deadline days after one for Fode Bello Torres loan from Milan in September to the Premier League in order for the move to go through. It eventually was announced at 12.30am on Friday. Maria will wear the number 9 shirt at Fulham which has been vacant since of course Mitrovic went to Saudi. Maria said this, it feels amazing, I'm really happy to be here and I can't wait to get started, meet the players and manager and play for the fans. The fans always play a big role and I can't wait to go to Craven Cottage and meet them all. I'm going to work hard for the team and create a real bond. I'm really honoured and excited to be here. Alright, chill out, man though. <laughs> <laughs> the Athletic reported earlier on deadline day that Chelsea were open to letting Bria leave on a straight loan deal without an option to buy, provided there was a significant fee and game time commitments in the agreement. The West London side previously rejected a loan approach for Bria from Wolves, while AC Milan inquired on deadline day, but due to financial constraints, they could not proceed. Their interest could be revived in the summer, maybe. Chelsea's original preference was for a sale or a loan with an obligation to buy, but eventually reached an agreement with Fulham on Tuesday afternoon. Bruyne's start to the season was delayed due to an anterior cruciate ligament injury he sustained in December 2022. He made his first appearance of the campaign in September and leaves Chelsea having scored twice in 19 appearances. Of course, Chelsea are left with only one striker in Nico Jackson, but Nkunku can play up top and so can Cole Palmer. More on that in just a moment. I quite like this loan to Fulham from Bruyne. Firstly, he hasn't got far to go. He he doesn't have to move. In fact, he's staying in Fulham. A lot of Chelsea players like the idea of that. I think certainly Ruben Loftus-Cheek liked that as well. Going to, you know, he never left London. He went to Crystal Palace on loan. He went to Fulham. You really don't have to go far. It's nice there. Craven Cottage is a nice place to watch football. I imagine it's a nice place to play football as well. There's relative safety about it, but Marco Silva is a good coach and they're looking for a number nine. Now, people might be raising an eyebrow at the deal in terms of how Fulham could pay nothing in terms of a loan deal if he plays a lot. Presumably, they're going to be paying his wages, so that's one thing, you know. But um, in terms of a loan fee, if he plays over 50% of the games, if he starts a lot of games... He's getting development, he's raising his confidence, it's a good six month sort of shop window to raise his profile, his uh, asking price, his asset value. Pretty gross stuff and unsavoury when you talk about a player like that. But it's the truth, so if he goes to Fulham, scores a few goals, starts that many games, it doesn't matter that Chelsea will not be uh, getting a loan fee for him. You know, the, his wages will be covered, and by the time the summer comes, he'll be worth a lot more money, so it's kind of win-win. And he's very young, he's got a long, long contract, so we're not against the clock there. I kind of get it, you know? I, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. How do you feel about Armando Bria going to Fulham on this loan deal? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think we should have given him more of a chance? Do you think he just needs some time away from Chelsea? I said on my Instagram, <laughs> some time away from Chelsea might do him good, and then joked about how it might do me good as well. <laughs> <laughs> it might do us all good, probably. Anyway, as always, put it out to you guys. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below, mate. And let's move on and just talk about the transfer window generally. Generally, a lot of sensible business in there. Look, Andre Santos to Strasbourg makes a lot of sense. He gets to hang out with Angelo. Uh, he'll play more. It wasn't good at Forest. Martin to Dortmund does look like a stroke of genius, especially if he wasn't going to feature at Chelsea. That could be a really good move. I think Breuer to Fulham's probably a really good move as well. We recalled Moreira to get Santos's loan out to uh, Strasbourg, so that was a sort of necessary evil. And we've recalled Cassidy from Leicester City, who was playing pretty well there, uh, featuring regularly off the bench and, you know, contributing somewhat. We've obviously called him back for selfish reasons, because we think he can contribute in the squad. You know, David Atro Fafana got a Premier League loan after taking him back from a poor loan in Europe. It's actually quite sensible business, really. Look, what's working, what's not working, let's try and remedy this. And, of course, we're left short. Certainly in the striker position, but look, Chelsea, we don't have Europe for this season, you know. <laughs> Granted, the congestion of the group stages has passed now anyway, but we've still got those slight less games should we have, like, qualified from a European group. So, slightly less games. And if we all collectively pray to our respective gods, and if Christopher and Kunku can stay fit... For me, like, he's first choice up top. Like, I'd play him as a striker over left winger at the moment, especially in this, like, sort of 4-3-3 three, three we're playing. I won't want him any deeper. To be honest, bro, he's so much better than everyone else at finishing that you just play him as a striker. Keep him close to goal. Chelsea statistically create a lot of big chances, the data nerds call it. 
Put up, <laughs> just put Nkunku up top then. That's the answer. Get the good finisher closer to goal. Nico Jackson could be the second choice striker. There will be times when they're both on the pitch together, whether Nkunku is playing left wing and Jackson's up front, or Jackson plays right wing, which he does sometimes, which he, you know, that's what he was before a year ago. He was a right winger, and then Nkunku down the middle. The Cole Palmer false nine experiment is not one liked by many Chelsea fans, but it's apparently something the manager's willing to do. So with that in mind, there is a three number nine choices there, even without Armando Brea. And it did look like Armando Brea, the longer he spent at Chelsea in this sort of zone, the worse it was getting for him. So I think probably even Pochettino, who would like the striker option, understands why the Fulham loan's a good deal. But Pochettino has to think about that in terms of Chelsea next season and beyond. He needs to think, I'm going to be at Chelsea for a few years now, which is going to get tougher and tougher and tougher at the moment. It's such a rocky and turbulent job that it's probably hard to see yourself in the future at. I mean, it's always been hard historically to see yourself in the future as a Chelsea manager. And the new owners have been like <laughs> come in being like, no, we're going to be... Different than Roman Abramovich, you know. You know, the the manager of the Dodgers has been there for like a decade now, or he's got a contract that was we'll seeing past a decade, and they're like the best MLB team. And you think, oh, they're going to do things differently. We're going to be the new man, the data driven Man City, Liverpool uh, version of Chelsea. We're a dynasty manager. Of course, we sacked Tuchel, we sacked uh, Graham Potter. So, not a great start with that. Many people are unhappy with Mauricio Pochettino, but I ask those people. Who do you bring in as an alternative that's going to accept this project? And even if you disagree with the project, it's a project we've already heavily invested into, and to like forsake it now would put Chelsea in massive financial trouble. So with that in mind, who do you bring in? It's a tricky question to answer, am I right? Or am I wrong? Am I right or am I wrong? So really, it's pot your bus for the moment. Of course, if the players stop playing for him, if Chelsea fly down the table and get eliminated for both cups, then maybe you address it in the summer, but he's not going to get canned at the moment. Chelsea are better than last season. We've already scored more goals than we did last season, and we were in Europe last season as well. So that's good. It's just, we're still very, very frustrating indeed. And the teething, you know, the teething problems that you did expect from this like whole new rebuild are perhaps more poignant than we thought they'd be. But maybe that's just always going to be the case and the way it is. I wonder, Pochettino sort of asked for new players in a press conference. So it's like people are asking the question, have Chelsea stitched them up by you know, sending out players but not bringing any in? But then again, he kind of changed his tune a little bit, Pochettino. I do wonder if he said that in that post-match press conference, I believe, after a loss, that maybe we need to get some new heads in. If he was saying that as an address to his squad, as in like, sort yourselves out. Or will replace you? Maybe. I don't know if he's necessarily the kind of manager to do that, but maybe he is. Um, anyways, it's you know, I'm sure, one thing's for sure, he's in constant contact with the football directors. And indeed, the Chelsea uh, owners are very active and communicative, and Badalic Bali and Todd Bowley. So it, I don't feel like he'll be left in the darkness with all these like wishes and desires with Chelsea. He probably voices concerns, and he they're so communicative and involved, I feel like he understands what will be granted to him and what won't be. So I think he'll probably... He's, he won't be in a position where he feels like he needs to send a message to the owners by coming out with stuff in press conferences or putting six goalkeepers on the bench and not making any substitutions. You know, the kind of things that we've seen before from certain Chelsea managers when they get a strop, you know, and they, like, do selections to, like demonstrate how annoyed grumpy they are, which is just ridiculous and juvenile. But we've seen it with a couple of managers at Chelsea. Anyway, look. I might be rambling now, so I'm going to end the video. I wanted to reflect on the no ins, the many outs, including Bria. Um, and, uh, you know, how do you feel? Like, Wesley Fafana coming back, those words he said, you know, him and Kunku, other players, you know, Kani Chukwameka, I haven't mentioned him in today's video. He looks like he could be a huge uh, asset to Chelsea. Comment down below. Of course, there's daily videos here. If you want to hang out with me and keep up, subscribe. Uh, thank you for liking the video, and I hope to see you back here soon. Peace.